Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my D programming language series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the C programming language. Now, what does the C programming language have to do with the D programming language? We're going to be talking about specifically better C and what that has to do with the D language. So let's go ahead and dive in here on the D programming language website, dlang.org. I'll go to documentation and the language reference here. Now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here to better C. And this is something that was added uh, a few years ago to the deep programming language and basically a way to get rid of the language runtime. Now, why would we want to do that? What's language runtime? Those are going to be the things that we're going to talk about today. So uh, let me go ahead and just move this off to the side. I've got my drawing board on the left side as well. Uh, and let's talk about better C and what that has to do with the deep programming language. So. Um, first and foremost, whenever we link to C functions or C libraries, that's basically trivial with a D programming language. Uh, D is, uh, so let's go ahead and capture some notes. So D is uh, ABI, which stands for Application Binary Interface, uh, compatible, compatible with C, okay? So basically what that means is uh, can call C libraries or functions, data types, etc., cetera, uh, easily, okay? So that's the first thing that you gotta know. That's one of the reasons why I like the deep programming language because you get the whole ecosystem of, well, the whole C world, which, you know, the world's still built on. <laughs> All their, you know, famous libraries and so on. Or really any programming language that can dump out a C interface you can talk to from D. So uh, that's a really nice thing here. However, um, there are a, a few things that, as noted here, the D programs uh, generally require. So that's when we're using the DMD compiler, LDC, GDC, whatever your favorite is. Um, and typically we need a D language runtime. Okay, now what is a runtime here? Let's go ahead and make some notes about that. So what is a language runtime? Okay, runtime. Basically, what that helps us with is things like garbage collection. Because while our programs are running, we have a garbage collector. We have things like different data structures, like associative arrays and dynamic arrays. I'll just put a slash here, dynamic arrays. Um, and even things like classes which have things like type information, runtime type information, and so on, right? Uh, as well as maybe a few other things that, uh, that are being kept track of. So basically, every D program that you're running has some you know, set of data structures, support code, uh, to let you do you know, the nice things that we can do in the D programming language, which is great. Um, but sometimes we want to actually get rid of this language runtime here. So you could draw a giant X through it if you want here. And that's where better C comes into play here. So I'll go ahead and just make a note here. Uh, better C allows you to use a D subset without language runtime uh, features. Okay, so let's go ahead and type that out here, features. There we go, okay. Uh, so that's enough typing on the whiteboard and we can go ahead and kind of uh, scroll through this here. <laughs> but that's the basic idea. So we're gonna remove the language runtime. So again, that's going to get rid of some of this stuff here uh, that you see on the left-hand side. Uh, but what it's gonna give us in exchange is one, further compatibility with C, further portability, and if you don't need a lot of these language runtime features and are okay with implementing the ones that you need or using some other library uh, to handle those features, then what you end up with is a really, really lightweight version of the deep programming language. And the value of that is gonna depend on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to build something really, really portable, uh, and what I mean by that is, let's say you're trying to compile your D code to WebAssembly, you might not wanna carry around all the runtime library. So you might wanna get rid of that and then just compile to WebAssembly or something. And that's a lot easier to do, or that's why I've been using it, for instance, better C to uh, compile to WebAssembly using the LDC compiler most recently. But if you're working on an embedded system, for instance, and every you know bit of memory counts, then again, you might not want to carry around the whole language uh, runtime, and again, you can disable it. So it's a really, really nice feature of the D uh, programming language that you can you know sort of enable 
or otherwise disable the runtime as you need. There's other things you can actually do with the compiler in general too, like disabling the Phobos library if you've got your own standard library. So again, you've got a lot of control over here. We just need to know that it's available here. Um, so as far as how to do this, it's basically a flag and then making the main function x turn c. That's going to be the basic thing that we do here. So let's go ahead and go for a little bit of completion, and then we'll write our hello world in better c here. Um, so again, better c uh, basically just uses uh, this flag here for dash better c. Let's go ahead and see here um, with the decompiler. So you could go ahead and give that a try here. And then you can see here's what our main program looks like. Okay. Um, so we do lose some things like right line because uh, right line has, uh, I, I forget if it has garbage collected or it might have exceptions in it. So we lose some of those features here. So we could fall back to printf, right, which is part of our core.stdc uh, uh, standard library and then stdio. Uh, and then you could just use printf here. So again, if you're already pretty familiar with the C world, this isn't going to be a dramatic change for you. Uh, if you only know D, then you'll learn a little bit of the C language, which is kind of nice as well. Um, but you'll get more features uh, than the C language has, and, and which maybe the C language is going towards in C26 or 29 or however often it updates. Um, you know, we might get some features, but um, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the uh, advantages here. So again, uh, with better C, again, the goal is you can make embedding D libraries and existing projects easier. Um, Right, uh, it really simplifies your build system quite a lot because you don't need the runtime at all. Um, uh, so D runtime is gone. Uh, if you're already using different strategies, like again, the main criticism that the D programming language uh, I find folks uh, get is the garbage collector. But uh, with better C, you've gotten rid of the garbage collector, so it's no longer there. And then you can just use whatever manual memory management strategies you want, calling into that library, just using malloc or whatever. Uh, it's totally fine here. Um, we will talk about import C shortly. That's a little bit different uh, project here. Uh, that's more about a C compile, compiling C code. So that is a different thing. So better C is a subset of D that relies on the existence of the C standard library. Okay, so what features do we keep here? Uh, all the compile time features, because again, that's just stuff that's happening at compile time. So it doesn't really matter uh, for the runtime code. Uh, so you get all the fun metaprogramming facilities. Uh, you get a lot of these nice features like nested or local functions, local structs, uh, delegates, lambdas. Uh, and you get in your structs, uh, constructors, destructors, etc. operator overloading. Uh, you have modules, no headers or anything like that. You get your lay, array slicing, some safety features here, RAII, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You even get unit testing. You have to do a tiny bit more work, but you still uh, get unit testing. Uh, that's this, you know, you have to write one extra line of, or two extra lines of code here to get your unit tests running. Um, so that's just a little example here. Uh, now, what do we give up with uh, better C? Again, garbage collector gone, which might be a good or a bad thing uh, for you, depending on what you want. I personally don't mind the garbage collector, um, but um, you can always implement your own or just uh, get rid of it um, or just use D's uh, garbage collector as well. Uh, you basically lose classes um, and module information here. Uh, you lose threading, so you've got to fall back to something like uh, pthreads or some you know C library or you know whatever other library. Um, your built-in types like dynamic arrays and associative arrays are gone, so you've got to use a container. So again, if you're used to writing your own data structures in C, uh, no problem there. Uh, again, some more concurrency stuff that goes away. Um, and then you don't get the static module constructors or de destructors um, uh, as well, because you lose the you know module info and so on. So anyways, let's go ahead and compile a better C program here. Uh, we'll do this a couple different ways here. So the first thing that we need to do here is make this extern C here to give us a main function. Um, and then you can still use things like, you know, enum equals, uh, you know, one, three, five. Actually, let's, let's, let's give this a try here. Let's see what this results in here. Um, so to compile it, I'll use DMD better C and then this main function here, uh, and it compiles here. Okay. So I'm able to have some, you know, compile, uh, manifest, uh, constant here. That's what we call these enums here and have a slice here. Um, that's no problem. Um, but if we do try to do stuff like, for instance, right line, hi, let's see what it's going to do here. It's going to give us a bunch of errors here. Why? Well, again, it's going to say we need, you know, the D runtime. Uh, let's highlight just that part here, D runtime. Uh, and we need type info. Okay, so we don't have that here. Uh, because there's some other, you know, 
basically information here that, that we need here. We still have templates, we still have all that fun stuff. Uh, no problem here, but again, we uh, have to fall back to, uh, usually what I do is I just import uh, standard uh, or core.stdc uh, standard C IO here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a printf hello uh, world. Okay. Uh, and now we can compile this and run it and get our hello world. Okay, so that's kind of cool here. Um, another way that I want to demonstrate just the, the benefits of this here is probably to show you on Compiler Explorer. Uh, yeah, let's show you in the D programming language here. Um, and I will go ahead, let's just go ahead and get rid of this. Let's just write a little tiny function here. Uh, something like int square, uh, I don't know, int x, something like that. Return x times x. And let's just return the square of uh, 25, something like that here, okay? So it's a really tiny program here. Um, and uh, I am using uh, LDC here, so that is available. So you can use different compilers here. Uh, but what I want you to see here is the uh, assembly, okay? So again, I'm just paying attention to the right side of this screen here. Um, and it's not too much assembly here. Uh, you can see, I mean, there's the regular stuff for getting set up here. Um, let's see if we could, we could filter out uh, some stuff here, but it's not too many assembly instructions here. Uh, but let me show you what the overhead is. Um, if I, you know, add in, uh, or, or let's just get rid of uh, that for a moment. Uh, let's have it recompile. Let's just make this int main here. Okay, so it's compiling and recompiling. And I mean, immediately you can see the scroll bar gets larger. Now, why is that? Well, we've got to bring in the D language runtime, which is loading up and starting a bunch of, uh, you know, data structures for the things like garbage construction, uh, garbage uh, collection, and uh, other data structures that are built in, and so on. Right. So we have this information here. So you can see the difference here, uh, just from that little change here by adding the better uh, C flag here. Okay. Um, and then, of course, as soon as you add in. Um, and let's see if I can find my uh, square function here. Uh, now this might've been smart enough to just like, uh, yeah, it's got D7 square or whatever, uh, but we want this to be compatible with, uh, you know, better C stuff. So let's rename that X turn C uh, and, and watch that name here. Let's see if it just comes to, yeah, now it's just square here, right? Because in the C language, we need unique symbol names uh, so things don't get mangled. So again, that, that's what's going on here with better C and why we're making things X turn C. Um, and of course we need a main function uh, for the entry point there. So a few little things there with better C. I like it uh, quite a lot. I've been doing different experiments with it. Um, and yeah, if you're missing features and stuff, uh, let me bring in this package here. This is kind of a cool one by Attila who maintains um, the uh, Phobos uh, library here. You can see his uh, name says credits here. Uh, but there are little packages like this. Like if you are missing uh, polymorphism and stuff with your structs, you can add it, right? Uh, you can implement these features. You can implement inheritance with structs, um, no problem, right? You can do this and see, you do just have to either use a library or build up these features yourself if you're really missing like classes and inheritance and this kind of stuff here. So that might not be everybody's cup of tea, but over a long period of time, if you want to get rid of the runtime and you're implementing some data structures or you have C code for these types of things, uh, you know, this is excellent to have. And I really like this option here. Uh, again, I really like this option for compiling to WebAssembly, for instance, uh, because again, um, you know, I don't have to port over all the garbage collection stuff and all the runtime uh, and, and so on. Um, it's just basically C code, which is already, you know, a pretty portable language. So with that said, folks, that is Better C. Again, it is part of the D compiler and what Better C is doing uh, is, let me go ahead and just highlight. There's one line that really succinctly um, uh, summarizes this is better C is just a subset of the D programming language uh, that only relies on the C standard library, which again is really, really, really nice uh, that you have that. Now, another question that folks also have is like how much of the FOBO standard library you can use? You can actually use quite a bit of it. Um, but uh, what I found is I end up, you know, I'm implementing some of these features or my own standard library uh, slowly over time here. So uh, you can still use a lot of the standard library features, just some that have things like exceptions and uh, any uh, allocations that rely on the garbage collector, you can't use. Okay, so that's that's the clear sort of uh, subset there. Alrighty, folks, so with that said, you know, feel free to 
keep up with these lessons on courses.mshot.io. You can follow the course here in a more distraction-free environment. And uh, let me know. I'd be really curious to see if you're using Better C, what domains you're using it in. I think it's great in the gaming domain, especially if you want to compile to things like web, uh, relatively trivial. And again, for games, you tend to kind of build up your own data structures and stuff anyways, um, or maybe you have some C code lying around. So it's a really great fit for that. Uh, but otherwise, I do like otherwise you know, having access to the full D language, that's also really nice here. So, you know, whether you need a subset to make things super, super portable and super lightweight as far as the executable. Um, and actually, let me do a quick um, demonstration of that just to show the runtime difference here. I didn't uh, quite do that here. Uh, let's just do a hello world here. So I'll make sure I save this here. So let me just compile this with better C. Uh, and then let's do, uh, you know, not uh, better see here just to see the difference in the size of the executables right so um let's go ahead and do ls dash l so here's the not better c version and you can see the size of that versus the other one okay so it's like a quarter of the size here now of course that's you know in proportion to the runtime and other features that we bring in but again that's what we mean when you might not want the language uh, runtime with you uh, so that you can target other hardware, be more portable or embedded environments. That's another great use case of better C here. So anyways, folks, uh, I'll go ahead and leave that here. Um, one last little experiment to uh, chat about just to show the sort of benefits there. And uh, I look forward to seeing it in the next one. And again, please do let me know what you're using better C for. I'd be really, really curious to hear if you're using it, if you're replacing the runtime yourself or you know, uh, just using better C to to compile libraries and then load that code into your D programs or something. So anyways, folks, with that said, thanks again for your time and attention, and we'll see you in the next one.